I want to say welcome back. Uh, we are at the Blick Art Materials series of summer workshops at the NAEA Studio and Gallery in Alexandria, Virginia. And we are here with a group of art educators from, I think, what, 10, 12 different states. So we've got a great room full of people here. Uh, so our afternoon session is going to be Veils of Light and Color, which sounds like a big, long, dramatic title, doesn't it? And it's actually a quote from an architect, a 19th century French architect named Violette Le Duc. I believe I pronounced that right. I did have French, but it's been a long, long time since I did. Um, there was a time, if you can possibly imagine, where stained glass was just non-existent. Um, it had been very popular during the Middle Ages, but then toward the Renaissance came along and stained glass became old, antique, a little bit too stuffy, a little bit uh, too upper class, upper crust. And then towards the end of the 19th century, there became an interest in it again. Um, it led into the Gothic Revival and eventually into the Art Nouveau movement. So people started to gain interest in stained glass, but it wasn't being produced. So what could they do? They had to come up with creative design solutions to, in order to get the colors they needed to make the designs that they needed. So unfortunately, they would take apart old stained glass most of the time and if they get the colors that they couldn't that they couldn't find. But then they also started a process called plating. And with plating, they would take a color of stained glass and layer it on another color of stained glass. So for instance, you found some yellow glass and you found some blue glass. And so you layer those together and you're able to get your green glass. So plating became a common practice. And then stained glass took off again and it began being manufactured in multiple colors and so the need for plating kind of dropped off and it became more of a specialty technique. Okay, so today we're going to make veils of light and color in a very uh, simplified way. First of all, I want to introduce you to a material you're probably not familiar with, but it's related to materials that you're familiar with. All right, this is, it's a polyester film called Duralar. If you peel back the corner, you're going to see that it has an adhesive. Of course, you can cut this down. You can cut this into multiple shapes. It doesn't have to be this big rectangle. So keep that in mind as you start thinking about your design, that you don't have to go with this rectangular shape. You can make this anything that you want it to be. Now, also in your package, you have a set of cellophane sheets. Now this is the material I was speaking of that you probably already have on hand. Anybody already have this stuff? Have you been wondering what on earth am I going to do with a bunch of cellophane? Start demonstrating this. And I love that flame shaped piece right there in front of me so much that I think I'm going to cut a very similar one here. Okay, so you'll want to peel back the backing paper only part way if you can. So let's just say I expose a little bit like that and then I'm just going to fold the paper down on this side so that I can work this area and that way I'm not going to end up getting fingerprints and things all over on the side of this adhesive. So we can just work one small area at a time. So I'm just going to stick that down. You can stick it down flat. You can purposely work a few folds or wrinkles in it. Okay, so now this space is covered. It's not sticky anymore. So if you put this one right on top of it, of course, it's not going to stick. But even if you just put it a little bit further off to the side like this, then it's going to stick. We still have that side that's loose, but we have enough of it that it's going to grab onto and it's going to hold it there. Now, look at how the intensity of the yellow has deepened. All right, so we have a, a different value to the color as well, even though we haven't changed colors. It's better to kind of keep the shapes a little simple, like this. Polymer gloss medium today. This is the Blicrylic polymer gloss medium. You could add a little bit of water to it, extend it a little bit if you wanted to, but once we have the piece completed, we're going to give it a good coat 
of this over the top. You can even get underneath some pieces if they really want to peel. And this is just going to act as our glue. And it's going to hold all of the pieces down. You can work other transparent uh, items into this. I just happen to have what we call glass globs around here. And this is actually comes from the glass making industry too. Uh, they just kind of, with the leftover glass, make little droplets. It probably would need a little extra glue underneath there to stick it, but you can also coat that with the polymer gloss medium. And we can get some transparent and texture pieces in there. Especially with the